Good day and welcome to You Talk. You Talk is a program dedicated to diversity, highlighting native born and new Canadians, cultures, and experiences. I'm your host, Ryan Funk. A little good added to the world can go a long way. Monica Feist has dedicated herself to helping others. Monica's life's passion and activities have been as recognized workforce development advocate and change leader for equality and employment access issues regarding immigrants, women, other able, other abled individuals, indigenous peoples, and youth. I had the opportunity to talk with Monica a little bit about the work she does and how she see and what she believes are ways to help make the world a better place. I'm a uh... Monica Feist. Uh, I'm uh, with Success Skills Center uh, as the CEO and uh, basically as a chief uh, executive officer. Uh, I guess I'm the one who has to get the money for the organization and uh, make sure that it operates uh, uh, to the best of uh, its abilities. Uh, we have presently we have a staff of six uh, we've had, we've, you know, with government grants, you go up and down. So uh, we've been, uh, we've reduced to six as a result of the COVID and uh, all our staff uh, were working until just last week. Uh, and uh, we had, a, we've had several contracts and uh, those contracts uh, uh, are almost finished. And so I've again had to lay off staff. I laid off staff last uh, March as well. What we do is we work with immigrant uh, professionals and skilled workers. Uh, we help them in terms of uh, getting uh, their pre doing pre-employment training, make sure that they're able to present themselves well. That includes such things as making sure that they've got you know uh, professional resumes. They have, uh, they know how to write a good letter of introduction. Uh, the thank yous, uh, we do a, a whole pre-employment program basically where they go through learning how to be interviewed and, you know, how to answer questions uh, in a professional manner. Uh, they get cross-cultural education. Uh, we do some Indigenous awareness training. We have a couple of programs, uh, such as a networking program called the Connector Program. We have, we have a partnership with uh, six other uh, uh, agencies, immigrant agencies in Winnipeg that also help people find jobs. And then they refer individuals to that particular program. Uh, so then we bring in volunteers. We have business community volunteers coming in. Uh, they can be owners of companies or managers or staff that have been recommended uh, to work uh, with us, as well as people from the Rotary Club and other organizations, business organizations. Anyway, they participate and do some of the mentoring that's involved in the networking. So in some cases, individuals start developing mentors from that, or they're just, they get the one-on-one -on -one to be able to, you know, try and find out more about the different companies and so on and who they could be working for, what their particular sector uh, is doing, uh, who is in the sector, uh, in the networking, uh, they may get they'll get a referral, uh, or they get three referrals if they join the networking program with the specific uh, employer that they may be, a, or the specialist in the field that they may be assigned to, and from there they go to another three because that person then send them again sends them to someone else still, and so on. So we provide the whole rounded sphere of employment uh, preparation and also support and obviously career counseling. Uh, we work with the individuals to get them to get their papers certified, uh, look at what they may still need. Sometimes they're told by the professional association uh, that they only have credits for so and so much uh, in their in their program of studies 
So at t- there are times we'll go back to those associations to negotiate additional courses for credit and so on. So we do a variety of troubleshooting as well as part of the uh, program uh, as long as, you know, when, when the client, you know, is with us. And also they may go to work and still have problems. So we carry on with them in that way. So we may provide them with uh, counseling assistance or career counseling assistance, uh, or if, like if they're running into a problem of somebody's giving them a difficult time, how they might handle it on the job. So there's uh, a variety of support systems that we put in place. Uh, we have uh, we are a hub, the Manitoba referral for a program called FAST, which is a program that helps people go through faster on some of the certification programs, for instance, in the accounting, in the uh, uh, biotech, uh, and a couple of other fields. Um, We have, uh, we're just about to be established uh, as the Manitoba hub for, as the the referral hub for um, the World um, Educational Services that does the assessments on people's credentials. Uh, I'm just trying to think of all the different things we do. We do internships. So we have several internship contracts where we place people with employers uh, for a certain period of time. We had the present ones that we have. One was for uh, 16 weeks and another one was for 20 weeks. One was for IT specifically. So we were training people just, or bringing people in for IT training. So they get individualized training as well as uh, training, group training through the, through the program. Um, just trying to think. Of, oh, we do so much. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> like your organization is really involved. Yes. Yeah, we, we're, our intent is to get immigrants back to their occupations as quickly as possible. Uh, we generally don't go do change occupations. In other words, we tr- try to stick w- within the related occupation. Uh, often the individuals have to, let's say you're an accountant back home. While you're getting your certification here, you may be working for an accounting firm or for an accountant. So you're getting time in the job which counts in terms of the required hours, et cetera. Plus you're getting paid. Yeah, and keeping those skills keeping sharp. Keeping the skills sharp and becoming familiar with some of the, uh, with, with the work that's involved and so on. And at the same time, uh, you are either getting your credentials uh, assessed, while, while, which may take uh, six weeks to two months, could take longer sometimes, depends. Uh, and at the same time, uh, as you're uh, registering for courses and so on, at least you're earning an income while you're in, you know, within the field. So we try to get people close to that. Then it's up to the individual if they've got the um, desire. The gumption. Uh, the gumption was the word, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. The gumption to go ahead. You know, I always say, you know, you've got to be hungry. And I don't mean it in terms of starvation. I mean it in the in terms of you really want to do the job that you've done before, that you want to get back to that level. And so it really is up to you if you do want to. Those that do, I can tell you, I just got a message from Rani, one of our staff. She was working with one of our lawyers. Usually they get advised by, we give different advice than the community does we, because we've had so much experience in the field. You know, there are specialized programs that move you faster. And we had a lawyer and I just got a, an email, an an email, a message that tells me, let me just find it and I'll just read it to you. I was really impressed. Where's my work thing? I got to get back to I keep on having a problem. It's in the WhatsApp. Sorry there. There it is. Here it is. Got it. It's a, it, Rani, one of our counselors just said, I would like to share with you that so-and-so, I won't give the name, accepted a position as a lawyer. I'm very happy today. It took three years of process. It was a slow process, but, but worth it. She took eight courses in two years. So she did it in 
it, it was a three-year process because she had to apply, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But she did the courses in two years, and that would have been, uh, she would have been working. Yeah, we've had other individuals have taken the whole time off because they have a partner who can support them and so on. But, you know, you have those kind of situations, uh, uh, and we have that for lawyer, uh, not only for lawyers, uh, there are similar programs available for fast-tracking fast programs, uh, uh, for engineers, for example, uh, and for others. Uh, you know, you've got people coming here already certified internationally, so it means that they're already on the last leg of being certified here, but often they're told to go back to Red River College or wherever and take, take their, those courses, which are just at the beginning of the process. So they really need a lot better advice than what they've been getting in general. And uh, that's what we do. We give them the best advice that can be possibly done for their particular occupation. And based on our experience, people move through faster. Um, but as I say again, you've got to be hungry. You've got to want to do it. That does mean you're going to have to sometimes, not always, sometimes people do get certified all the way through right away. We have had some teachers that automatically got through, as an example. But they didn't think that they could. You know, so then we'd say, well, you know, you got to try. Here's what you got to do. So we take every person as an individual case, as a puzzle to be solved. And our intent is to solve the puzzle. And if the person goes with us all the way, it'll happen. Yeah, they'll find that success. Then the other thing we do is we work a lot with medical doctors provide special consultations. Uh, also, we do specialized interview, interviewing practice with them in terms of the interviews that they're going to have when they're being interviewed either to get into a program or if they're going uh, or prior to a residency, etc. So we do a whole myriad of things. We'll even help them with their uh, specific letters that they have to prepare uh, of and uh, what can I say? Uh, we, we walk them from one end to the other. They're doing the work, though. Please understand. Yeah, of course. We, we provide the facilitation, the guidance, the advice, but they still have to do the work. It's not done for them. And so they've earned, every one of them who gets there, they've earned it on their own merit because they, they have that capacity and we know that they do yeah you're just helping them get you know down that route a little bit we're facilitating, facilitating. that's a good word for it right yeah. we're, we're facilitating their journey they're you know other people call it we helping them navigate the route and we provide the different pieces of advice that they may need as they go along that route you're also heavily involved in social justice initiatives and organizations. So there was Immigrant Women's Association of Manitoba, Success Skills Center, Reaching Equality, Reestablishment of the Junior Achievement in Manitoba, and Women's Employment Counseling Center. What is the importance of these kind of uh, social justice initiatives and, and organizations, and why did you, you know, want to be involved in these? Well, I, I guess. Uh... Each one of them have uh, different interests that I've had in my life. Uh, going back on the junior achievement, uh, um, I was a junior achiever uh, in its very first program in Winnipeg back in 1960, I believe it was 65, 64, 65, I believe. And uh, it was a valuable program. I was in it uh, for two years, my uh, I believe it was grade 11 and 12, if I recall. And uh, I gained a lot of uh, knowledge. We were, The company that I was with uh, happened to be Great West Life at the time. And uh, Great West Life advisors were just absolutely fabulous with us as kids. Uh, really uh, taught us well. We did well. Our, our company did extremely well in the program. Individually, I think we all gained a lot of skills and, and 
confidence, which is an extremely important one, uh, confidence in moving forward with our life and what we wanted to do, aside from learning how business operates. It's important to know how business operates uh, and uh, what all the concerns are. And uh, you got it firsthand because we went through the process. So I was really keen when I was approached uh, to sit on the board of directors uh, to rejuvenate uh, the organization. So that's, I had my commitment. I, you know, I was paying back to an organization that helped me uh, in terms of my personal development, which I still feel today. Uh, in terms of the Immigrant Women's Association, well, that got started as a result of there were the the what is now called the Immigrant Center, which was at that time called the International Center, uh, had uh, conferences for immigrant women. Uh, I guess there was some funding from the government that they got, so they had yearly conferences and they'd get together and talked, but they talked. And everybody said, oh, this was wrong, and so on, so on. So then uh, finally what we did was uh, I was invited to, uh, to join the group uh, and or, or not join. It was basically to come down because it was happening. Uh, I, first I was asked to speak to the group, so I did a speech at, a con at the conference. And I happened to say some things because at that time I was with the federal government whereby um, – you know, I mentioned that I felt that people were putting to, into little cubby holes, and particularly women, and because of the stereotyping, of course, uh, women weren't getting into the kind of jobs in the background that some of the women had. And there were immigrant women professionals in that, within that context uh, that I was referring to specifically. You know, we had women doctors, we had women lawyers, we had women engineers. This is back in the 70s from other countries around the world. And uh, so then I, so anyway, uh, I, I was challenged on it, but nevertheless, uh, after the conference, uh, I sat down with some of the people who were organizing the conference and I said, it's nice of you to talk about things, but I think you're going to have to start putting some resolutions in place. And maybe it's useful if you're also an organization, a formal organization. And uh, then they got together, uh, well, first of all, I got together with them to start organizing the different issues that they had. Some of them were with the government, with the department that I was with. I was with at that time. That time it was called Canada Manpower, which we had changed to employment. It became employment and immigration. For, uh, so anyway, uh, we uh, then started putting all the different issues, and I suggested, okay, some of them were federal issues, some of them were provincial issues. Let's divide them up. And so we did, and then we, I suggested to them, they write to every government department in the different, on the different issues to the ministers and ask for very specific answers, whether it was daycare or pay, you know, and so on. So that's what we did. And uh, so the Immigrant Women's Association formed, uh, I think it was 77, 78, somewhere in that time and uh, started operating and started lobbying. Now, right now, I think they're sort of in a transition. Uh, I haven't heard much from them, uh, but I'm going to be checking, on, checking in on them again to see where things are at because it's been very quiet at that end. Uh, some of the other things, Success Skills Center, well, actually before that, it was uh, as a result of that and meeting a lot of immigrant uh, immigrant professionals, I suggested that why don't we, because there was money available for women at that time because of the International Year of Women, um, the government uh, put aside, uh, which is my job, uh, money for women. I said, let's start, why not start an organization that helps the um, these women get back to their occupation and generally speaking, helping women because at that time, back in the mid '70s uh, and uh, and just late '70s, women were just starting to get back to the to the workforce. There was a heavier demand for employment and so on, and uh, two people needed to work uh, to support the family already. 
So uh, that organization was formed, Women's Employment Counseling Service. Somebody came to see us and uh, we approved the project and uh, got Women's Employment Counseling Service, which then became Employment Projects of Winnipeg at the end. Uh, at then a number of years later, someone came to see me in my office when I was still with uh, the federal government and uh, she had a lot of background in uh, with languages and so on and she was looking to do something and i said well you know I, the, the the one thing that i'm not seeing yet is uh, although we have the women's employment counseling service i think we need a specialized service for immigrant professionals uh, that work with you know to get them back to their occupations it's a little bit more complicated than what can be handled in general. So that's what she did. She went and I said, you know, put the project together, come back. Again, we found money for her and she started an immigrant women's project for professionals. Amazing. Five years, I, I left, I left uh, in 84 five the government and went into my into count into consultation i did a con, uh, I, I joined a consulting firm as a consultant and uh about four four years later i guess after i left she came back to me and said monica i've got to leave uh you're the only one who understands what i you know, what needs to be done uh, could you take the contract on and, and i was very busy at the time because I was helping somebody write a book on the Sioux of Canada. And uh, I just said, oh, I've got that, plus my consulting contract, plus I've just had a baby. I'm really busy. <laughs> anyway, I ended up, uh, I ended up uh, saying, okay, I'll do 10 months uh, if that's what you have to do to finish your contract. So I finished her contract. And we just kept getting more people coming at the door, and I put in another project, and uh, I'm still there today. <laughs> that's how it goes. So, You're like, okay, yeah, I'll do this one job, and then... <laughs> so, I mean, now we're seeing more social services throughout the years coming up. Uh, what's What work still needs to be done in workplace development to remove barriers? Well... You know, it's interesting that you say that. Uh, somebody just asked me the other day if, uh, what did I think about resumes uh, where you didn't have the name on it? And uh, would that remove discrimination? And so I said no. And so they were surprised. And the reason I say no is, is that if on the resume, you're still going to put in where you got your degree. I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. What country you were coming from. Then, uh, you know, you're not much further ahead when the person on the other side might still be biased. So to me, all I would like to see is resumes, blind resumes, so that you don't know whether it's a male or female, and that the individual responds to the competencies that are required for the job, and that they are interviewed on the competencies, as opposed to what country, where, what university, and so on. Because the moment you look at the university, you know where they're from. You know, and if you've got any biases, it's going to happen now. Or you're going to hire them and you don't like them. And uh, that's a whole other issue. You know, this is where a lot of education has to come into play. So, yeah, I'd like to see the, one is have that removed. Uh, and, you know, it's been proven. Uh, you know, they've proven it with music especially. Uh, you've heard about the blind study on that. I mean, there's been blind studies done where they had, uh, in the, uh, they've done it with resumes, which showed a difference in terms of the hires that resulted. And they've done it with musicians where they played behind a screen, made sure that the floor was carpeted just in case uh, there was a woman that was coming in with uh, clickety-clack. Yeah, heels on, yeah. 
<laughs> you know, and then they had them play. And uh, it, immediately the hiring of the, the women musicians went through the roof. So, you know, to me, I'd like to see competencies be the judgment, be judged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if people are qualified for the job, they deserve yeah. it. If you, if you meet certain requirements, in other words, you got the right degree, then you accept that. You, you have such and such knowledge in such and such a subject, meets that, comp meets that. then you go, in at, you go for what the uh, actual uh, questions are. I mean, I would probably go as far as if you could uh, do it so that you can't tell whether it's a male or female answering. You know, you can't tell the color of the skin. You can't tell the accent. You can't, you know, all those kind of things. Because people really do make judgments. You know, I mean, I can recall, it, it's not now so much, but I can recall where I have taken individuals and uh, uh, to the workplace uh where the you know the i would realize that this employer is not going to hire you know i mean i haven't experienced that lately uh but then i haven't taken people to the workplace and my staff haven't mentioned anything to me that they've experienced it but they could have uh, i just think that i do get, still get the feedback oh they speak with an accent Big deal. Get used to it. Yeah, get used to it. Just live with it. Yeah. And if you can't, I mean, my experience has been uh, when I have, I have, I think all of my staff have accents. Yes, they do. Uh, I don't even think about that anymore because I'm listening for the content. I'm not listening for the accent. I'm listening to what it is that they're saying, which is much more important. And it means that I pick up my ears or I had to pick up my ears. After a while, you get accustomed to, to the sound if you're not accustomed. And that happens with every language, you know. So, you know, sometimes I almost think there should be blind sound. Blind sound. Yeah, well, you know, it's the reality because there are brilliant people walking on the streets of Winnipeg who do not have a job in their field where those particular professions are missing out terribly. So I think it, it behooves us as a society to use the brain power of its people you know, for, for cause, for, for work. For, for improving the conditions, because that very same person may be the one who's going to be finding or discovering or coming up with a solution that no one else has thought about. So, you know, How do it's the same thing. I feel the same way with Indigenous people. We have a criminal in Canada. Every day I think about it, mm -hmm. how criminal we are. How, how do we work towards these changes? Well, I guess we've got to convince a lot more people uh, that, that things are, you know, that if they're living comfortably, that they, they need to share that comfort. You know, and uh, if you want to share the comfort, uh, uh, then uh, you're going to do something about it. You're going to make changes in the laws and the systems. Some of these things are systemic. You know, just like hiring practices, there's systemic hiring practices. So you've got to you've got to be willing to look deep into yourself and say, "I am biased. I know I'm biased. I may not like to admit that, and sometimes I may not even know what that I'm biased." And, and truly, so. If you have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight. Leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk, and have yourself a good one.